My next guest is the most incorrigible Texan that I know, and that's saying something. He is the pimp on a blimp, primetime 99 Alex Stein, and he has just got himself into all sorts of trouble with his latest antics. What are you doing? Yeah. I'm trying to talk what to Brittany. Like hey, Britt. Like do you still want to? Do you still want to boycott Stop. America, Brittany? Stop. Stop. Well, get off me. Stop. 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 I'm weird. Why? She hates Stop. America. Stop. Are you, what about the Merchant of Death, Britt? Stop. Get off me. Stop. Get off. Was that, was that a fair? I told you, incorrigible. And Alex Stein joins me now. Alex, that clip was you with Brittany Griner, the WNBA player who was uh, jailed on drug charges in Russia. There was a prisoner swap where Brittany was freed in exchange for a Russian man dubbed the Merchant of Death. Tell me about your exchange. Well, Rita, I mean, here in America, Brittany Griner was the lead news story for about a year when she was arrested in Russia with some marijuana vape cartridges. And, you know, she plays in a place in Phoenix, Arizona, where recreational marijuana is actually legal. So her having the marijuana in America, she wasn't breaking the law, but obviously in Russia, they have different laws. And I'll be honest, she obviously was a political prisoner. But for me, what, what frustrates me is that she is the Michael Jordan of women's basketball. Yet the WNBA couldn't even define the W in their logo. So it's really weird that we kind of like <laughs> idolize Brittany Griner and she's so insulated that me asking her, do you think it was a fair trade, was not just considered hate speech by the Phoenix Mercury, but also the WNBA, the WNBA Players Association, Brittany Griner's agent, and Brittany Griner's teammates. So that shows you these, these uh, athletes do not want any tough questions. Well, no, the WNBA has put out a statement. They're appalled. They've put out a lengthy statement about the safety of Brittany Griner being a top priority. Now, let's have a look at a bit more of your interaction with Brittany, and then I have some tough questions for you on the other side, young man. Why are you being like that? Dude, I want to talk to Britt. Britt, are you scared to no. talk to me? Britt, you're scared. Have a good day. The merchant of death, Britt. Have a good day. You should be ashamed of yourself. Off me. Get off me. Stop now. Britt. Britt, do you hate America? Britt. Britt, was it a fair trade for the merchant of death? Britt, was it a fair trade? Brittany. You done? Was it a fair trade? OK, Alex, you have copped some heavy criticism from so many people. CNN is outraged. Uh, some woman called Jamel Hill has labelled you a clown and, and, and uh, other words I can't say on television. Uh, Rhino Adam Kinzinger was so upset he was almost crying. Uh, why do you do this, Alex? Why can't you just behave yourself? Well, Rita, you know me. You're my friend. We've met in person. You know I'm insane for the Ukraine. So I have a very unorthodox way of journalism. I'm not a super professional like yourself, Rita. But what I am is I'm unorthodox and I'm not afraid. So that's why I like to get in these people's faces, whether it's a politician on the right, whether it's Dan Crenshaw, or whether it's a politician on the left, or whether it's AOC, or whether it's a super famous celebrity. So I just kind of want to ask the questions that the people want to know. And you're like, Alex, why do you do it in such a bizarre way? Well, I feel like that's probably, I don't know, with the TMZ era, this new digital media era, the fact that I can get the camera in the subject's face. It's really interesting. And sadly, nobody's going to ask these questions if I don't do it, Rita. So I'm not trying to virtue signal. I'm just trying to get the answers to the questions that everybody wants to know. Now, let's move on to Pride Month, uh, and there's no shortage of videos at the moment where parents are exposing their kids to strippers or drag queens and performances that are really quite disturbing and sexually charged, you know, not appropriate for children. Take a look at a clip that went viral this week.
Yes, uh, we're seeing all sorts of uh, antics with children uh, that, that in the vicinity. I mean, this particular picture, again, has really caused uh, quite a bit of discussion online. There's a woman holding what looks like a toddler with a pretty much a naked man on all fours twerking in front of them and then another child walking past. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll play some more footage of mums who've taken their kids along to performances where, again, very sexual in nature, people in G-strings, legs akimbo. What is going on, Alex? What is the eagerness that some parents seem to have with exposing their kids to this sort of content I think, I don't know, in some notion that they're being inclusive and tolerant. I really struggle to understand the mentality here. Well, you know, it's actually really dark. What, what happened was last Pride, last year, there was a big event that I went to. It was called Drag Your Kids to Pride. And they had a drag show with children. And on the wall, it said it's not going to lick itself. And this got national news. Yeah. And what it did was, Rita, but it caused so much polarization that people on the left, now in order to get free publicity and to virtue signal and to, you know, I guess be a, you know, progressive icon, they're, ha they're having more drag shows for children. They're doing more drag queen story time events. So for me, I'm really worried because if you look at companies like Target, we expose them for having LGBTQ driven clothing for children when their own vice president of marketing got caught giving $2 million to an organization called GLSEN, whose main mission statement is to give kids transgender therapy without parental consent. So this is an attack on children. Of course, I'm not homophobic. I'm not transphobic. You know, every gay person, straight person, whoever wants to celebrate pride has the right to celebrate pride. But the sexualization of kids is not okay. And that's what it's become, Rita, in order to be extra edgy or in order to think that they're, you know, sticking it to the conservatives they're bringing their children to extra sexual events. So this is not a political thing. This is an over-sexualization of children. And it starts with the access to porn. It starts with, you know, just the digital era that we live in now where kids can get on social media and share pictures. It's a sexualization of kids problem. It's not a, you know, gay, straight problem, in my opinion. Well, you said it's not a political issue, but I think it is because you're not seeing conservative yeah. women, conservative mums bringing their kids to these shows. And I've got to say, as someone from an ethnic background, you're not seeing too many women who look like me taking their kids to these shows. It does seem to be overwhelmingly leftist, uh, liberal, white women who think this is appropriate entertainment for their children to be exposed to. And uh, th there does seem to be a, a political thing where it's almost like where we're going to show the Conservatives just, just how tolerant we are by uh, exposing our kids to drag queens in G-strings. I mean, the whole thing is bizarre, but it's also disturbing, as you said. It's dark.